I would say that the, the biggest premium of being a part of uh, CFAB is uh, having the discussion with the rest of the business uh, with topics uh, regarding sustainability, where we have uh, uh, challenges, where we have success, and, uh, and uh, just uh, having a discussion about the ongoing uh, development of sustainability. CFAB provides us with a common language and a platform to share concerns about sustainability and for, um, let's say, a platform uh, based to talk about these challenges and how to solve them. So it creates more a sense of community with the whole sector in which we face these challenges together rather than as a single Robin Hood um, in, in, in a dark wood. We start with CIFA from the beginning and I think it brought Jaguar a lot of changes, uh, especially in the mindset of sourcing. Uh, because we are really involved with our suppliers and, and think about uh, environmental and social aspects. In our project, for instance, it's a, um, an improvement of our practices across the board. So it's, the, um, it's every practice on a banana farm. The way we uh, deal with our soils, what's uh, uh, the reduction in the use of pesticide, it's going to be uh, our policies in general and the social level. It's going to be health and safety for employees. So the project that we present today um, and that was supported by IDH is, goes across all the different aspects of banana production. We are visiting our suppliers more and more. Uh, we advise them in, in uh, what um, kind of environmental actions they can take, but also on social actions. Uh, we help them setting up certifications or advise them on certifications. What I find interesting from other organizations sourcing produce from developing countries is how they deal with uh, certificates, how they deal in their own ways with sustainability challenges and what I find interesting how they succeed in marketing their efforts. Having a basket of standards, for instance, that we have in CFAP, uh, having uh, uh, the same requirement for the suppliers, it makes us very much easier for us to, to actually get through to the suppliers and, and know that they are on board on what we are demanding. One that is, uh, we have been discussing very much today and which is very uh, difficult to solve is actually uh, living wage and making sure that you can live on the wage that you get as a worker and, uh, not, and often the, the minimum wage that is often stipulated in the local laws uh, it doesn't help you very much. Uh, you have to have a, 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 another way of calculating and that is not easy because it depends on which sector you look at, uh, which uh, country, which uh, produce and uh, how the, the, the supply chain is set up. For us one of the hot topics is um, how to include smallholder farmers in these value chains and to make sure that the tools and methods that we have to ensure sustainable uh, sourcing apply for them as well. One of the most important topics we discuss now is the social compliance uh, certification. Uh, in our supply chain we see that uh, most of the companies are already covered with Global Gap which is one of the basket uh, certifications from CIFAF. And uh, we now uh, face that the, the social part uh, is, uh, for some countries, challenging because of cultural issues. The next step, I would say, would be an even more open approach because uh, the only thing that we know about the future is that we don't know anything about the future. So we have to have a setup for, for CFAF beyond 2020. The CFAF commitment is to have 100% sustainable supply chains by 2020 as guaranteed by a basket of certificates that guarantee both ecological and social commitment um, uh, and sustainable supply chains. We are progressing fast. We've just seen reporting by PwC and we are improving. But there's still quite a lot of gaps uh, that we need to close, so there's work to be done. Um, that requires commitment from all members, which is the reason we are here. It also requires being realistic about the economics of it. So in order to improve things on the ground, you need economic incentives. It's, it's the economy, stupid. So we need to discuss openly within this group uh, costs and prices related to uh, sustainable supply chains. I think that's one of the big conditions to meet our 2020 goals. The next step for Jaguar to work towards the 100% goal of CIFAF uh, is to uh, convince our purchase department 
to uh, focus not only on price and quality, but also on uh, environmental and social issues uh, and to, to source the most sustainable products available. The bulk of our farmers and all of them works toward a higher standard collectively. That's the goal that CFAV has set and that's what we are going towards. At the same time, many farms have already achieved that level of, um, of sustainability. So those farms, in the meantime, are going to pioneer new practices. Uh, they're going to pioneer um, new ways to implement sustainability in the farms. So therefore, by 2020, um, they'll create the base for the next steps beyond 2020.